Now, let me share my final thoughts from the interview with you. I hope you're able to grab at least one good takeaway from the interview with George. And as I like to mention, I'm going to share with you my takeaway from the interview. And I feel that it's about our relationship with failure during our journey. And failure is not just acceptable. It's okay. No, it's necessary for growth. Now, the possible issue is how you interpret and respond to this failure. You can respond in a positive and rational way, or you can respond in a negative and irrational way. For those who don't know, I've been teaching in Tempe, Arizona since October of 2000. And GD Jiu-Jitsu is a program that focuses on sport jiu-jitsu competitions, and probably 80% of the students have competed at least once. And during my 18-year journey teaching in Arizona, and I'm recording this in July 2018, I've seen a lot of interesting situations of how people deal with failure. For example, around August of 2004, a new student signed up at the AZ Combat Sports, the MMA gym that I taught for almost 12 years to start training. Let's call him Jack. Jack was in his early 20s, blonde, shaved head, and about 185 pounds. On his first day, I asked him, what's your goal? And he said, I want to fire MMA, man. I already know how to stand up. I have a lot of experience from the street. But now I want to get paid to fight, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be fighting for free no more. So now I need to learn the ground stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Yes, my friend, jiu-jitsu is what is up. Jack started training around the same time the team was training for the IBJJF American Nationals, which back then was the only tournament in the U.S. besides the Pan Ams. And three weeks before the tournament, Jack had completed close to three weeks of training, and he asked me about competing, and I told him, Dude, I'm all about getting experience and everything, but you just started getting to three weeks. You're going to go in the tournament with about five weeks of training and no previous training before. Just wait for the next one, man. And he said, I've been hanging with the guys. I'll be all right. But he really didn't have the awareness to understand that actually people were taking it easy on him. And then a week before the tournament, I find out that he actually signed up for the tournament. And it comes the day of the tournament. Man, I could tell you that Jack took his opponent down with a huge double leg takedown, put his knee on the belly, mounted, took his back and choked it in 40 seconds. However, that did not happen. (laughs) Matter of fact, it did happen, but it was the other way around. What his opponent did to him, slam him, score 12-0 and choke him. And after the match, I had a very quick interaction with him and still on the fence when he just walked the mat. With Jack, and I remember he was wearing his brand new Coral Gi that he bought at the tournament. And I just told him, man, it's a lot harder than it looks. You know, it takes time. Just be patient and so forth. And I wish I could say that he took this failure as a lesson, grew from it, and now he's a black belt with his own successful school. But again, that did not happen. (laughs) You might be curious, where is Jack now? Honestly? I have no idea, dude. I haven't seen the son of a bitch since that day. That dude disappeared, gone, never seen him again, never went back to the school. He didn't answer the phone, didn't reply to emails. Remember, this is 2004. There is no Facebook. This dude disappeared. Never seen him again. We'll never know why Jack disappeared. Was he that embarrassed? Because he probably pictured his pure domination. And when this didn't happen... And he didn't meet his expectations. He crashed. And here's one thing, dude. Not only Jack, but you and I need to keep one thing in mind. The fact cannot be changed. Only your response to the fact can be changed. The fact that he chose to compete despite the fact I told him not to do so. And the fact that he lost. That is it, Jack. You lost. The fact cannot be changed. Failure is not the problem, but how we choose to interpret and respond to the fact is the problem. And it's up to you, 100% up to you to choose how we're going to interpret and respond to the fact. Does Jack have the right to be disappointed with himself? Absolutely. The same way that you have the right to feel happy, excited, and satisfied about something, you have the right to feel disappointed, angry, and pissed off about it. That's that's your right. Now, if you're going to act on these feelings and respond it in a negative and irrational way, that is a completely different ballgame. Jack most likely interpret the fact that 
it was a huge disappointment and embarrassment. Disappointment because he put his expectations so high, then crashed down hard. And embarrassment because he probably thought, Gustavo and my teammates are going to look down on me. They're going to make fun of me. What are they going to think of me? His response was, I ain't going back there. I'm done. The fact happened. He interpreted the fact in an irrational and negative way instead of interpreting in a rational and positive way. As a result, he responded in the easiest way possible, just not dealing with the failure at all and just quitting. I know this kid that when he was 17, he competed in his very first jiu-jitsu tournament as a blue belt. And he was super excited telling all the friends, family, and everything that he's going to compete. And during his first match, his opponent pulled guard real quick. And in 20 seconds, boom, put him in a triangle. And he tapped. Quick note, his opponent was a white belt and he was a blue belt. So how embarrassed would you feel if you were in a blue belt and you're submitted by a white belt in 20 seconds, right? Since it was a small event, they did some exhibition matches and he competed again. But now this time he went for the full five minutes. But at the end, he lost by points to a yellow belt. How would you feel in this situation? How would you deal with this failure per se? How would you interpret and respond to the fact that you got submitted by a white belt in 20 seconds while being a blue belt, and then you lost your yellow belt in your first tournament? Well, this kid did not interpret and responded to the fact like Jack did. He said, this is embarrassing. This is awful. I saw people doing stuff that I've never seen before. I want to compete again, but I need to find the proper competition school. So he did, started competing, lost a lot, won one small tournament as a blue belt. And today he has a school in Tempe, Arizona, has a podcast called the BJJ Mental Coach. What? <laughs> I could easily have quit it, especially being young and not knowing how to deal with the failure and a lot of uh, quotations, friends making fun of me. And I just kept going. And throughout my career, my 23 years of teaching so far, I've seen so many people drop along the way because they couldn't deal with the failure. But I chose, and that's the key word here, I chose to learn from the failure, which matter of fact, let in a stronger fire inside of me to keep going after even harder. And I also want to make clear to you that I'm not using these examples to try to impress you with my inspirational story, but it's just to convey to you that when you choose to make a rational and positive interpretations in your failures, you will respond in a more constructive and prospering way. And remember, failure is not just acceptable. It's necessary for growth. Embrace the concept that the fact that you failed at something cannot be changed. Only your interpretation and response of this fact can be changed. If you are resenting yourself because you failed or because you made a bad choice in the past, start the process of forgiving yourself now. You did the best you could with what you knew. If you knew better, you'd have done it different, but you didn't know. And you did the best you could with what you knew. But you're in the now, so live in the now. Interpret this fact in a rational and positive way and choose to respond in the same manner. And as the author Charles Given said, use the losses and failures of the past as a reason for action, not inaction. Oh, We're glad you were able to join us for this episode of the BJJ Mental Coach Podcast. But the lesson doesn't end here. Watch the videos and download the audio of the 10 mental mistakes BJJ competitors make and how to avoid them for free when you subscribe to the BJJMentalCoach.com. Don't miss the chance to find out what might be holding you back from being your best self on and off the mat. That's the BJJMentalCoach.com.